Let's start with the Boolean stuff. Over here, we have two inputs with shapes, and we have the proxy. Uh, for the terrain proxy, before we're going to throw it into the Boolean, I want to make it a manifold mesh, as I have noticed it makes it a lot easier to work with the Boolean. And to do that, I'm going to use a poly extrude. I'm going to use a point wrangle at the normals of this mesh. I'm going to make sure it points downwards. Now inside of the poly extrude, we can use this normal to do the offset. Point normal. Fine. Oh, not pre-compute, but of course attribute and go. Okay, this a bit. One triangle over there going a little bit weird. Probably because that triangle is ah uh, of course. See what we want to do with this. Now I actually don't think it push too much, so let's just end this a bit. And us play uh, back first. And let's extend it a lot more. So we always have the bottom of our initial in shape. Right now, there's another Boolean. Probably still have to look a little bit at input shape before and clean them up a little bit. Let's just let's just throw it in there and see what happens. Now the boolean we can get this a little bit different. Okay. All right, perfect. And now we're cutting away the terrain for our input shapes. Very nice. Next up, let's go to the shapes. And I'm correct, let's open the geometry spreadsheet by Alt and right bracket. Geometry spreadsheet. And we should be able to see different materials. That's one way you could be able to divide up your shapes by checking which material they have. Another thing you could do is use vertex colors. And you could use the name of the objects. There's there's a bunch of different ways how you could divide this up into basically get a little bit more out of your inputs. Instead of just the normal shape. Over here, let us place a blast for now. Let's split these two type of meshes based on their materials. Like so. Whatever is bark and what's not bark. That's what we're doing right now. We could, for example, say that the bark material is going to be the negative shape and our other material is going to be a positive shape. So let's uh, create another output. And I want this one to negative one and this one now we have a positive and a negative shape Oop. in there save real quick and let's throw all of these into our boolean stop net Keeping this subnet 
above here because somewhere we might want to have used reuse these shapes and now we know which ones are positive and which ones negative subnet there we go positive shapes these nulls over here so it's a little bit cleaner and we know what we're doing there we go and now i want to have a boolean first of our uh the positive shape of the terrain i think that's nice sometimes recentering is a little bit weird with the houdini uh, engine session going on so it's the height like double height or on double height uh, might help you a little bit to recenter a bit again otherwise turn on points you might be able to find it and just go there manually. A little bit annoying. Cool. All right. So we have our first Boolean. I like to usually do this with uh, the positive shapes instead of doing the positive and the uh, negative shapes uh, on their own. Because if we have the positive shapes combined with the terrain, get some nice information sometimes regarding well, whatever we want to do with the terrain over here also not super important this is this is definitely becomes a little bit more artistic and do whatever you think uh, is best um for now we have these shapes being chained correctly what we wanted um sometimes uh we actually First, we want to also remove the terrain. We, we, we want to do the, the terrain operation. We actually don't want to use the terrain right away. So let's create some group attributes. For a group which is called terrain over here. And one which is called positive over here. And then we have one which is called negative over here. Right, so over here, after this Boolean method, we could then, for example, delete the terrain part. So now we just have, to have our initial shape and throw this into the next Boolean. But now, because it's not a manifold shape anymore in your Boolean, make sure that we are treating our first input as a surface. And this way, it won't break, and we can still see that we have our cube being cut out nicely. Anything breaking. Take this again. And let's go back to real. Let's pull down this cube a bit more. Let's see what's happening over here because we're having this right weird dent over here. Kill this cube a bit. And let's move it down. And let's let's see. Other side. Yeah. Right, two of these. You can see that our Houdini engine is pretty quick updating this stuff. And now we have a basic setup. Let's go back to the We have our basic operations over here. Done with the Boolean. And from off. From here, we can start to do a bit of slicing to make sure we have some input shape or some shapes, which are a lot easier to do the module placement with. 